Hi guys, George here from Zero Period Productions, and today we're taking a look at A Cat's Life, a mod that adds, well, you guessed it, cats to Skyrim. While this is not the first mod to add cats to the game, A Cat's Life by Dark Fox is more fleshed out and has more features than the other ones out there. This mod, available on PC for both Skyrim Legendary and Special Edition, adds cats all across Skyrim, allowing you to interact with them in various ways. Upon installing the mod and launching the game, you'll be greeted by a courier, who will give you a letter that reveals the location of the first pet shop, Melvin's, just outside Whiterun and by the Hunting Brew Meadery. Upon entering Melvin's shop, you're immediately greeted by several cats, as well as various displays of cat beds, bowls, collars, and so on. Melvin is fully voice acted, and I recommend going through his dialogue options. I will include a few in the video so you can see them for yourself. Yes, if you consider my cousin Jean's hole in the ground just outside the north gates of Riften. People like cute fuzzy things, and I like gold. The math seems to add up rather nicely. I have a dog allergy, rabbits are too fast to capture, and I don't much like the idea of trying to attach armor to a mud crab. So no, just cats. I heard people like to buy things from stores when they enter them. Melvin is a bit of a cat enthusiast, and has some fun dialogue, and can even be heard singing to himself on the rare occasion. Talking to him also gives you the location for the second cat shop, just outside Riften, and he even explains why he hasn't set up shop inside of the city walls. It was the cheapest plot of land I could find. Besides, the taxes inside the city are ridiculous. While the mod author's reason for not including the shop inside the city is likely due to avoiding potential conflicts with other mods, it's really cool to see that they gave an in-universe reason as well. It makes the mod feel more fleshed out and even realistic. There are two methods for obtaining a cat, one of which is probably a little bit more expensive but also much more straightforward, and that is simply purchasing a cat through one of these two stores. The different breeds of cats have different prices attached to them, and there's several options including calicos, tuxedo cats, etc. I chose a blue, which I assume is a play on Russian blues, and I decided to give her the name Orissa. I also don't know for a fact that my cats are her, but they looked like a girl cat to me. And I don't think there's any way to check anyway, and I'm not sure I really want to. I also recognize how fitting it would have been to name my blue cat Inigo after the follower mod, who happens to be a blue Khajiit so maybe next time. But the expenses don't stop there. Just like having a pet in real life, your Skyrim cat has needs. So I made sure to buy all the essentials from Melvin, including a bed, two bowls, food, water, milk, treats, and yarn. I even gave Orissa a collar, because, you know, she's a classy lady like that. Your new cat immediately acts as a follower, giving you the chance to take them around with you, either on your adventures or to bring them back to a home of your choosing. I took her back to Bree's home, and once there, I set down her bed, assigned it to her, and then assigned Bree's home as her home through her interaction menu. Much of your cat management in this mod is done through your inventory, including placing the cat's bed, filling the bowls with either food, milk, or water, and then placing the filled bowls so that your cat can use them. Once the bowls have been placed, you can call your cat to them, at which point they'll eat or drink from them and leave them as empty. At this point, you can pick the bowls back up and the cycle continues. I pretty quickly realized that I would probably need to start buying cat food and water in bulk if I intended to keep Orissa with me. After leaving Orissa at Bree's home, I decided to take a trip out to Riften to see how poorly run Melvin's cousin's shop really was. At first glance, it's a decent shop, but definitely a little more cluttered and messy than Melvin's. That and Jorn is kind of a dick. Yeah, there's something about this person who keeps wandering into stores asking stupid questions. You can ask about why there are two separate shops as opposed to just one pet shop for all of Skyrim, and he has some funny dialogue options as well. But yeah, he's kind of a dick. Yeah, my cousin Melvin has a place in Whiterun, but those cats ain't got no life experience. You're better off sticking with my stock. Look around. Does it look like I sell anything else? No. You gonna buy anything? And like Melvin, he will also hum along to some tunes sometimes. Now, I've talked a little bit about purchasing a cat, which is one of two ways to get a house cat as a pet. But let's talk about adoption. 
which is the process of finding stray cats and gaining their trust so that they'll start following you on their own. This feature can be turned off entirely if you don't want the option to adopt strays. And I'll get into this a little bit later, but one of the most impressive parts of a cat's life is the sheer amount of customization options and the in-depth mod configuration menu. You're really able to tailor the mod to your liking and make sure that it plays the way you want it to. But back to adoptions. Strays can be adopted by gaining their trust. By petting them, giving them treats, and placing down food bowls, they'll come to trust you and like you. Different strays have different starting dispositions. For example, the White Run stray starts off pretty neutral to you. However, the Windhelm stray starts off cautious, and it's missing an eye, likely due to being mistreated. Hence why it's a little bit more hesitant to trust anyone. And then you have the Riften stray, which frankly just hates everyone altogether. It's another minor touch, but it's one that really shows you the level of depth and thought put into this mod. By improving your relationship status with the strays, you'll unlock different dialogue options and eventually the ability to adopt them. Should you feel that it's taking too long to increase your stance with a stray, or any cat, you can change the chance to increase these stats from the MCM as well. Should you find yourself attracting more than one stray at a time, and decide you just want to adopt all of them, that's okay. You totally can but you may need to change how many cats you're allowing to follow you at a time. However, there is no limit on how many cats you can own. And speaking of having as many cats as you want, the mod also includes a new perk, Crazy Cat Person. By default, the mod requires you to own four cats before this perk activates, but you can change this should you want it to be a higher number than that. The Crazy Cat Person perk makes it easier to adopt strays, so you can continue to grow your cat army and it grants you a new title and a letter from a courier acknowledging this. If anything, I'd like to see some other NPCs maybe be given this title. I can definitely see Olava the Feeble being a crazy cat person. But it's not all fun and games in a cat's life. There are darker moments in owning a cat. The mod currently includes an experimental needs feature, in which cats will require feeding once or twice a day. Should you continue to not feed your pet, they will run away or simply die. Kind of a morbid feature, albeit a realistic one. Should your cat die, you can bury it and leave a gravestone at its resting place. Once again, very morbid. You can also attack cats, kill cats, and so on, but I'm not going to be showing that in this video. The upside is that with the needs feature, this only counts for when your cats are following you. So if you dismiss your cats and have them at your home, you don't need to worry about these needs, and you won't come home after a week of adventuring to find them dead. I guess the assumption there is that your house carls are competent enough to take care of a cat. Either way, it's a good way of balancing the needs system without requiring you to constantly go back home and feed your pet. Even without needs disabled, stray cats can still run away if they are mistreated. Or you can simply abandon them if you don't want them anymore. Purchased cats will not run away however, and even the mod author says that if you want to abandon one, you have to get creative. As I mentioned earlier, one of the many great aspects of this mod is the sheer amount of customization and depth in the mod configuration menu. From the amount of time it takes for your cat to eat, to tutorial pop-ups, new loading screens, and the percentage chance for feeding, anger, and runaway, it's amazing how much you can fine-tune this experience. In the tracking section, the mod will show which stray cats you have discovered, how many cats you own, or are waiting for you. You'll also see options to enable NPC cats, allowing Skyrim denizens to own their own feline friends, as well as for select inns and shops to have their own food and water bowls outside for strays. In order to play a cat's life, you will need both the Skyrim script extender as well as SkyUI, and for these reasons, it's safe to say that you shouldn't expect this mod to come to Xbox One at all. The mod was built to be compatible with numerous mods, and makes it easy enough to install without worrying about potential conflicts. On the mod page, you'll find compatibility patches for open cities, most likely to avoid any scripting issues that could arise from cats wandering off when adding the cities to the open world cell. Given that a cat's life has its own need system, the mod author has also created patches for both eye need and realistic needs and diseases, so that a cat's life will piggyback off of those systems and make use of the items added by those mods. Finally, the mod has a compatibility patch for better roads, due to some minor clipping issues. Dark Fox has said that if needed, other compatibility patches will be made in the future. One thing I love about this mod is that it adds something as simple as having a pet, but giving the means to actually take care of them. Skyrim allows you to have dogs as a follower, but the ability to really interact with them or take care of them isn't there at all. If I'm going to have a pet in Skyrim, I want to treat it like a fun pet, dammit. 
I want to go on walks, play with them, watch them curl up on a cute little bed. You get the idea. It's one of those things where I understand why they didn't add this sort of functionality to the base game, but having it makes the world feel much more alive and lived in. For me, I love pets. I'm more of a dog person, but the reason for that is because I'm allergic to cats, but not to dogs. I'd honestly be down with having a cat, and I've even heard that Russian Blues are one of the breeds that people with allergies are able to own without issue. See? I knew what I was doing when I got Orisa in the game. In the end, A Cat's Life is an incredibly detailed mod. A lot of effort has been put into making it super feature complete and compatible with most mods out there. There are a couple hiccups, but nothing major. Cat's interactions with bed can be a little weird, and I think that's due to how beds are placed by the game. Same goes for the food and water bowls. I also noticed a couple times where the cat's animations had a weird loop, or they would get stuck in the environment. Still, nothing major and nothing that really detracts from the experience. A Cat's Life is a great, fun mod, both for cat owners and the people like me who wish they could be one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out my Patreon? It helps make videos like this, and frankly, all my videos and streams possible. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.